This episode of Girl Influence Power is brought to you by Collectin. Shop or run the world's tiniest boutiques with Collectin. Welcome to Girl Influence Power Podcast. I'm your host, Nadia Lee, entrepreneur, jewelry designer, CEO, co-founder of Collectin, the social plus shopping app that is your new platform for fashion. Thank you for tuning in live on CastBox. This episode is brought to you by Collectin in partnership with CastBox. Girls, have you ever been caught trying to find the perfect gift for that girl who has everything? Guys, have you ever forgotten an important date like an anniversary or birthday? Well, fear no more. Girlfriend Box is a personalized jewelry gift box automatically sent on all the big days. You can pre-schedule ahead and never forget again. So go and schedule your gift now at girlfriendbox.com. Today, we have entrepreneur and woman extraordinaire Penny Ledbetter with us. Penny is CEO, wife, mother to four children, two stepdaughter, five son and daughter-in-laws, all of which are very accomplished in their own fields, and grandmother to nine grandkids with one more coming in September. So I've known Penny for many years as she's one of the few women CEO in my Vistage group. So for those who don't know about Vistage, it's a CEO coaching and peer advisory organization (laughs) that meets monthly. Penny is the CEO of C. Sanders Emblems. C. Sanders is an advertising specialty company that designs original promotional products. They are best known for their beautiful lapel pins that goes on baseball hats for sports teams like Little League Baseball, clubs like Elks Club and RSVP, and companies like Disney. Under her leadership, Penny was voted in 2017 by PPAI, Promotional Products Association International, her industry's trusted professional organization as best boss to work for. In her early years, Penny spent many years as a teacher before retiring to a full-time mom after her four kids were born. As Penny's leadership's could not be contained just staying at home. She would volunteer in her community that led her to be PTA president for three years, PTA council president, first district PTA board for San Gabriel Valley and board member on many foundations and committee. So Penny is the ultimate role model for knowing how to balance work with family and still raise very successful children. All of Penny's six children graduated from university with three having earned PhD. Because I know personally Penny very well, so I know how accomplished your kids are. So, wow, Penny, Thank well you. done. Thank you very much, <laughs> Nadia. That's a lovely introduction. Oh, no, no, no. You share so much wisdom, so we need to oh. get right to it and okay. talk about all the things that you can share. So, for all of us to. out there, we need to learn how to work and life balance. Okay, oh. let's just kind of go into your background. Yes. Um, so, I know you grew up in the 50s in Canada before you yes, immigrated I did. to Southern California in the 60s. So, it's actually very turbulent times in history back then. Korean War, (laughs) Vietnam War, Cuban Missile Crisis, Kennedy assassination, just to name a few. Now, I have a young daughter and she's growing up in today's COVID world and all this social and racial imbalance. Um, So I can imagine as a child growing up in very, you know, turbulent times. So what do you think these impacts in your childhood has, uh, you know, impacted you when you're growing up? You know, I children are very resilient. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I was growing up in Toronto in the 50s, right. the things that I remember are not so much what you mentioned, but mm-hmm. polio. Oh, really? Polio, there was no vaccine uh, until I was, I don't know, I think seven or eight years uh-huh, old. Mm-hmm. And I remember lining up in the elementary school mm-hmm. auditorium to get the vaccine. Oh, and all wow. the kids got it. Right, and then right, after right. that, there was no more polio. Oh. And so polio was a scary thing. Yes. We had to be careful of germs. Right. So right. it's kind of similar right, to, right, right. to today. Oh, wow. I didn't yes. even think about that. But it never, none of those things left scars right. because we were young and uh, our parents uh, were very protective, mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. both myself, my parents right. and uh, my friends. And I think um, many parents, uh, we, they didn't share their mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, worries or right. their fears. Right, right. There wasn't a lot of fear amongst right. them either. They'd come through World War II. Mm-hmm. Oh, right. And uh, my parents are from England and Wales, and right. so they were in the midst of World War II. Mm-hmm. My dad was in, in a foxhole when he was 17 years old mm-hmm. in Burma fighting mm-hmm. the Japanese wow. in World War II. So uh, when you talk about fear and being right, scared right, and going right. through things, they had been through a lot. Right, right, And right. they protected their 
children, we did not have access to TV. We didn't have a TV mm -hmm. until I was maybe eight or nine years old. Right, right. There was no TV. Mm -hmm. There was no social media. Right, right. There was one news broadcast mm -hmm. in black and white right. <laughs> when we did get a TV and dad would sit and watch the news when he got home from work. Mm -hmm. But you didn't hear about all of these things. Uh, or if right. you did, it was in print on right. the newspaper. And it's different to see things in print than to have it in your face. You That's know? true. That's true. Yeah. I, you know, sometimes I wish <laughs> like, yeah, but maybe yes. there was not so much yes. the social media thing going on now. We had a lot of freedom too. Right. There was not a fear of children you know, uh, being kidnapped or anything like right, that. Right. I mean, so we had a lot of freedom uh -huh. to go anywhere we wanted That's and true. play with our That's friends. Right, and, right, right. and we figured things out with our friends. And um, so parents were not, you know, hovering right, over right, right. us in any way. Yeah. So as a kid, were you like studious? Did you know what you wanted to be? <laughs> 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 Nadia, you know me. I know, that's why I need to ask. <laughs> no, I was not studious. I was not studious at all. Um, I, I was adventurous and I was um, creative. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the education system in Canada in those days was you, even at six years old in right. first grade, is you sit at your desk and you memorize what was on the board. Oh. Well, that it was very difficult to yeah. sit at a desk all day at six <laughs> years old. And besides that, I had astigmatism that mm -hmm. we didn't know about. So oh. I needed glasses. I couldn't see what was oh, on the board. So wow. I started mm -hmm. out school very much behind ah. <laughs> and, uh, and finally caught up when my uh, lovely second grade teacher realized, I don't think she can see anything. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> So I got glasses, and oh. it was a whole new world. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> wow. So I didn't really uh, become studious at all uh, until um, college, actually. Mm. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now, so do you feel like um, back in the days it was possible for a woman to have a career growing up? No, no. Uh, I know there were uh, careers for women right. in the United States, mm -hmm. but certainly in Canada, I didn't know anything about that. Uh, Mostly mm -hmm. um, women were nurses, secretaries, or teachers until right. they got married oh, and had okay, children okay. and stayed home. It was just... Right, something right, right. to do until you got married, but it was a career. No, ah, okay, mm -hmm. yeah, because you're very naturally in entrepreneurial, and yes, uh, and usually, you know what I've noticed, like mm -hmm. uh, with entrepreneurs, they're actually very athletic too. Oh. <laughs> and yes. I know you have a ballet background. Yes. So, what do you think? Like, you know, ballet, or and actually, you were with the Canadian National Ballet. So, what do you think? Is there any correlation between a sports or the discipline and and that drive to be, you know, successful uh, entrepreneurial? Yeah. I wonder, because you brought that up and it made me think, you know, it's just a natural thing for me to go towards sports. Right. And uh, I was just in a little YMCA mm. ballet class as a young girl. And like we all took ballet lessons. Right, right. And the teacher was Canadian National Ballet. Uh -huh. And she pulled myself and another gal, a friend of mine, mm -hmm. Kathy, out and uh, talked to our parents. And next thing we knew, we were with Canadian National Ballet. Ah. And, and off we would go on, right, right. on the uh, subway way mm -hmm. and uh, streetcars and everything by ourselves wow. to our ballet lessons in Toronto. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. yes. Normally, they like you to live in mm -hmm. with so many hours right, of right, school right. and mm -hmm. so many hours of ballet every ah, day, but they okay. do allow a few mm -hmm. to uh, commute. Oh, ah, okay. So and it takes a lot of discipline. Oh, yes. Yeah, and yes. trust. <laughs> yeah, a lot of discipline and at a young age and uh, doing hard things, mm -hmm, doing mm -hmm. a lot of hard things. Right. It's very um, tough. I, I loved field hockey and mm -hmm. other sports, but for ballet, the first half hour or so is always at the bar. Ah, Every ballerina right. hates the bar <laughs> because it's it hurts. It's hard work, right. and it's, <laughs> but you have to do it. Right, and as right. a young child, it's like, okay, I have to do this. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. in those days, they would walk around with a stick. If your knees weren't straight, ah, then whack, mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. get it. And uh, that didn't happen too often, but it did happen. Ah. Nobody thought anything of it in the day. Oh, right, of course, nowadays, true. you'd be arrested for <laughs> that. <laughs> child abuse. <Yes. laughs> You never complain. It's, it's I mean, really there's, true. Yeah, there's no whining in ballet. Yeah, I'll tell you that. You, you could not um, actually complain about anything. Right, and, right. and most parents, if you did, would just say, well, you did, must have done something wrong. That's you know? true. Actually, yeah. yeah. The, per the perspective is very different. Very different. Yeah, because yes. nowadays the parents are super, you know, yes. super protective. So it's yes. always something else done to my kid. And never yes, the kids yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I would suggest that um, not to worry too much about... Right 
any scars left, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. certainly these children will remember this. Right, right, right. Absolutely. Right, that's like true. I remember polio. <laughs> you know? That's true. They'll remember different things. They remember right. different things, but it's not... It's it may not, not be negative. It's not. <laughs> that's it's true. really not. So that's it's true. Gonna, it's going to be okay. Right, right. And actually, we actually spent a lot of good family time this whole last three, Isn't four months. Isn't that a positive? Yeah, that's mm-hmm. the positive, definitely. I yes. don't think my dog or my daughter has <laughs> seen so much of me. <laughs> yes. Yes, <laughs> our, our pets are really the recipients right. of some good attention. <laughs> that's true. I um, love it. <laughs> so do you have any strong woman role model when you are growing up? No. No? So no. how do you, do you look up to anybody, uh, like, or your mother, or, like, or is, I mean, does... I, I know, that's shocking, you, right? isn't it? Shocking. Yeah. For, these, for this generation, yeah, shocking yeah. for my generation, right. which is baby boomers mm-hmm. mostly. Uh, no, that's not. There weren't a lot of women oh. out there doing mm-hmm. things like what we are doing right, now. Right, right, we, right. we are trailblazers in that oh, way. Nice. And uh, so, no, uh, there weren't. I would say, um, you know, I had a great grandmother, mm-hmm, Charlotte mm-hmm. Jane, and, in England, and uh, she ran a hotel all by herself. She was very organized, very Mm -hmm. disciplined. And I knew about her and I thought... Ooh, she can run a hotel. Right, right. I mean, that was nowadays you'd think nothing of like that. <laughs> but in true. a small town in England, right, wooden right. under edge, the Swan Hotel, right. <laughs> and she ran the whole hotel. And um, so that was really the first person I really knew right. in my family or my mm-hmm. you know world that um, did something outside of raising children in the home. Oh wow, mm-hmm. so different. <laughs> Very different. Very we've come different. A, we've come a long way. Yes, we yes. have. Um, I know your first uh, like try at entrepreneurship was at 15, and you're yes. teaching local kids ballet. So how <laughs> how did you decide to do that? It's so entrepreneurial. It was. <laughs> um, well, I can't say that it was actually my first idea. Mm-hmm. I, I when I moved down here at 15 mm-hmm. to uh, San Marino, uh, my dad was transferred with the bank, and that's uh, how we got okay. down here. And uh, I was not a happy camper at all <laughs> oh, at 15 yeah. doing this. But all the ladies on our street were just thrilled because they had a babysitter. Uh, for their children. Mm-hmm. So I got to babysit ah. and make a little money. I had right, nothing right, else right. to do. I missed mm-hmm. all my friends and everything. So uh, then one of the mothers said to me, uh, when she found out that right. I was missing my ballet and everything, because there's no Canadian National Ballet mm-hmm. down here. So um, she said, well, would you teach my daughter ballet? Oh. And I thought, hmm, here's an idea. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, I can do that. Right. And so why just teach one? Mm-hmm. And you could teach lots more. And I remember, Oh my God! A dollar fifty per child per wow. lesson. And in those days, that was a lot. It That's was a, it was a time true. of fifty cents an hour for babysitting. Oh, so a dollar wow. fifty an hour. <laughs> right. It's really great. Wow, that's <laughs> nice. How many students did you get up to? Oh, there. You know, they would come and go, but you know, four or five. Oh, oh, nice. Yeah. So it was nice. Okay. Yeah. So I know you study um, education in college. I did. Um, so you know, I. You have a lot of entrepreneurial instincts, so you still went and got your education. Do you yes. think that was very important? Oh my gosh, yes, absolutely. Because I, I don't see how you can be an entrepreneur if you don't know anything about the world. Right. And how do you learn about the world? You can self-taught, or you right. can go to university. That's true. So I have one son who is an artist, as you know, and mm-hmm. um, is doing very well. But you know, he again was, you know, why am I in university? Well, because how can you represent our world? through your medium, without right. knowing right, history, right. without knowing about the world. That's true. So, um, And it teaches you, actually, I mean, it teaches you a lot of discipline, too. Yes, it does. Um, and actually, I, I, I didn't, I mean, I, I didn't really like studying that much in college, too. I like to mm-hmm. go out and party, too. Yeah, of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> but then, you know, I think it taught me a little bit about, like, you know, having a discipline or a certain way of writing and communicating. Exactly. Which, which I don't really think they emphasize that much in, in high school and the need to communicate and need to have structure. So, yeah. I couldn't agree more. <laughs> I couldn't agree more. You just learn so much. Yeah. So yeah. how old were you when you had your first child? Uh, I was 30, and I had twin boys, oh, wow. fraternal boy right, twins, right, right. yes, at 30. Well, mm-hmm. Twins are hard, especially your first <laughs> four. <laughs> it, it was truly a blessing. It was truly a blessing. They, <laughs> they are absolutely a blessing. And um, it was, uh, I don't remember too much the first two years, I'll say that. <laughs> it's always a blur. It was a blur. <laughs> it's a blur. <laughs> but uh, they were just fantastic <laughs> little boys. So now, now as I'm 
I'm growing older and, um, mm-hmm. and I actually had kids very late in my life. Um, mm-hmm. So looking back, what does it mean to have kids at a much younger age versus, you know, having it way, way later? Yes. Pros and cons or, you know. Yes. Uh, you know, there's no right or wrong or mm-hmm. best. Uh, it's just... Um, for myself, I can only speak for myself, yeah. really. Uh, I wasn't ready in my 20s. Uh, I really wasn't ready. <laughs> right, right. Uh, I mean, you're never ready for twins, but, you yeah. know. <laughs> I don't think you're ready for kids <laughs> until they pop no. out. I mean, what do we know about parenting? <laughs> right. I mean, seriously, we're all in the same boat as right. we start out. And uh, I think that... Um, Tw- your 20s, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I learned, because um, I, I did go beyond, and when I had uh, three small children, I went beyond and got my marriage, family, and child counseling degrees, and uh, I learned that, you know, the 20s are an important time. Right. It's a selfish time, but right, selfish right. in a good way, right. because you need to focus on yourself, right. get, get through your education, mm-hmm. um, focus on a career, and what you want to do, and who you are, That's and, true. And, and some of us are still learning who we yeah. are, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it's <laughs> a lifetime. Kind of, it's a lifetime thing, but you know, you have to start somewhere. Right. But you must be selfish in your early 20s. Right. And so it's a good time to get to do all of that. Yeah. And so for me, um, it was it worked out really well, That's 30, true. because yeah. I had done a lot of travel. Mm-hmm, I had mm-hmm. figured out what I wanted mm-hmm. to do. I had, I was ready. Right. So mm-hmm. what advice would you give them like in the 30s then, once you figure out like, you know, mm-hmm. hey, I'm ready to start my family, um, mm-hmm. like, what you know, after the 20s, <laughs> what's the 30s like? <laughs> well, let me see. Can I think back that far? <laughs> that was a long time ago. Um, I was very, very busy in my 30s. I had all my children in my 30s. Right, right, right. And, um, but I, I also realized, although I felt like I was ready mm-hmm. to be a parent, I wasn't ready to be a parent. <laughs> you don't know anything about parenting. Right. So I learned, I read a lot. I mm-hmm. learned a lot. I, I just... Um, focused completely on uh, my children. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you had a lot of side hustles, actually. I, well, yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> Can you talk about some of them? Those are very interesting because you're like a natural salesperson, too. Like yes. You're, you're yes. like super Mary Kay, right? I know. <laughs> Can you believe it? I know. I, just, well, you... I loved it. I love fashion. I love makeup. I, I love all of that. Mm-hmm. And so, um, yeah, I, I felt like I needed to c- contribute financially. Right, right. Mm-hmm. And so I started an au pair business. Right, right, I right. started I, Mary Kay. Mm-hmm. I sold so much Mary Kay that they actually sent me to Dallas for free to the convention. I met Mary Kay. Wow. So she's kind of a role model for oh, me, actually, nice. in, in mm-hmm. my 30s. Oh, when I nice, think about nice. that, when you talk about role models, that's, yeah, that's Mary nice. Kay was. Oh. She started with nothing, mm-hmm. a single mom, yeah. you know, had to make some money, right, hustled, right, right. and oh my gosh, she built an empire. Right. And I thought that was just absolutely fascinating. Right, right, right. So Was there a lot of women during those times that did a lot of high side? hustle or was it just no. like no was it it's a no. hush hush no if I you do it or is it did people frown upon it like uh when I was in my 30s mm-hmm. um most women were not working that uh, I knew they were home uh-huh. with their families right, right, right. yeah oh, and okay. so I was kind of doing both mm-hmm. but I was able to do it I organized it so my husband was home at night right. so I could do my mm-hmm. Mary Kay parties at night oh. so once the kids went to bed right. and when I got my degree I was studying at night mm-hmm. I spent a lot of time at night when the kids were in bed doing the other things right and then mm-hmm. I know you're very heavily involved in your community too. Yes. So tell me about that. Oh, we, we wanted to talk about your PTA mom aspect because I know oh, you have this yes. genius, genius <laughs> thought about PTA hiring PTA moms. Yes, <laughs> We've got to get yes. into that too. <laughs> oh, that's a fun story. Well, you know, as you said, I did a lot of PTA work mm-hmm. and I know what that's all about, how organized you have to right, be right, and, right. and all of that. And so one day, um, I think I was like, um, I don't know, 2010 or 2012, I can't remember. Uh, I was interviewing for Mm -hmm. an admin assistant and um, a gal came in and she said, apologetically, I'm so sorry, I've kind of, I've been home for 12 years, you know, I have to be honest and raising my children, I haven't been working. Mm -hmm. Before that I did this, this and this. I said, are you kidding me? Mm -hmm. I know exactly what you were doing for those 12 years at home. And I pretty much hired her on the spot. Oh, nice. And, um, you know, I was making a list. Can I read my yeah, list? Yeah. <laughs> For those people who think that moms who stay home aren't, aren't doing anything, be sure and hire them because you know what? Here, here's why. I have my glasses on. <laughs> They're organized. 
They can talk to people in a friendly, kind, and professional way. They're educated in procedures and policies. They deal with um, making routines and structure. They always show up on time. Uh, they're not looking at the clock. They have a lot of incentives, so they, they pick up on something else to do, uh, a lot of initiative. Um, they, if they don't know how to do something, they learn it or they ask questions. Mm. Um, they work as a team member. Uh, they know how to have fun and celebrate the small things. They're grateful for the opportunity and they run with it. They bring you ideas. They keep you informed and they've always got your back. And there's a whole lot more. <laughs> so, I mean, I just can't say enough. Oh, uh, and right, I, right. I have two um, past PTA moms uh, uh, on my team right now and, and they're fantastic. Oh, so, wow, nice. I, I know from experience what they were doing those 12 years. Right. <laughs> so I knew I wanted her. Oh, that's nice. Mm -hmm. So we'll be right back and talk about a little bit more about your company. And Wonderful. I know, yeah, that whole celebration theme that you, yeah. <laughs> I love how your, built, your company is built around that. Thank you. All right. Okay. We'll be right back. Now you can try before you buy on Collectin. Introducing Experience, the new way to shop jewelry. Flaunt your style and express your creativity with Experience. Get it today, only on Collectin. We're back with Penny Ledbetter, and we're going to talk a little bit about your career or your business. Um, yes. Okay, I know you made a huge leap as, uh, as this business owner. Yes. Um, and then started, uh, bought C. Sanders Emblems. And I did. And then actually became a CEO <laughs> and yes. owner for the first time. So what drove you to that decision? Oh, well, like so many things, it just, uh, it fell in my lap. And I said, yes. Wow. And just like that. Just like that. <laughs> I, I'm more guts and brains, I often say. Oh, no. <laughs> so I very about. much doubt that. <laughs> um, I think that many times opportunities have come by, and right. I've just said yes. Oh, nice. And this was one of them. Um, my husband's an attorney, so mm -hmm. when he was trying to sell this company right. for his client, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, he would come home and talk about it, uh, and mm -hmm. a little bit here and there, and he couldn't find anyone. And out of my mouth one day came, well, how about me? Ah, nice. <laughs> and he said, you know, I think you'd be really good at this. Right, right. And then and there, there, there I was. <laughs> I knew absolutely nothing about running a business. So. Well, but you run many, many things. Well, yes. <laughs> so yeah. it's all about the same, really. Yeah, yeah. you we do really apply. Talk all, about it. Yeah, we apply all of that to it. Yeah. So let's talk about C. Sanders Emblem. What yes. does the company do? Give us a little bit about, yeah. Yes, we, uh, we're a promotional products company, mm -hmm. a supplier of promotional products. Uh -huh. We design those products, most of custom products. Ah, okay. And so uh, we sell them to uh, schools and sports teams mm -hmm. and uh, businesses. Right. We do um, branding for companies. Mm -hmm. uh, their logo goes on to our products uh, and mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Yeah. Right, right. And your company, you have this huge wall of these awesome pins yes. that go way back. Yes. Right? <laughs> like they're decades. beautiful. <laughs> yeah, they're beautiful. Beautiful. They're like jewelry. Ah. They're a cloisonne, mm -hmm. which is, um, you know, goes way, way back to the Ming Dynasty in China, where mm -hmm. they make mm -hmm. these beautiful colored enamels. And so we, they're all done by hand. They're ah. beautifully made mm -hmm. and uh, last a lifetime. They're really a keepsake. Right. Yeah. yeah it's true. So. <laughs> we have some for our style stars, like collecting yes, this. Yes, that's right. <laughs> that's yeah, right. They're you very do. beautiful. You do. Um, yes. What was your family's reaction, like your kid's reaction, when you tell them, hey, I'm going to run a company? <laughs> um, not much. You know, ah. it's just like, okay, mom's going, you know. <laughs> It's another one of your usual things. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just, there wasn't too much. They actually, at the time, were either in college or just out of college. Uh, so they were okay. busy with their own things. Okay. And uh, I, I, will, <laughs> I will say I did have to add a private line to my phone because mm -hmm. my daughters weren't used to not being able to reach me all the time. Uh, I remember my two youngest daughters. And so um, they'd be bothering the receptionist a lot with calls <laughs> like, Mom, how do I? Mom, Mom, Mom. Oh. And so <laughs> I tell a little story on that. So I'm like, OK, you got to call this other line. Stop bothering her. <laughs> <laughs> but that that just lasted a few months. Oh, they got used nice. to it. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, no, it wasn't anything. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And then what was, like, the first day as you walk mm -hmm. into the office after oh my being gosh. the owner? I mean, what was that like? <laughs> 
I was so intimidated. I, I went around and, of course, met everyone and chatted mm-hmm. with everyone. There were about 18 employees at that time right. there. And uh, then went into uh, my big corner office all by myself and <laughs> sat down and thought, okay, now what do I do? <laughs> <laughs> so, of course, the first thing I did was decorate the office, completely uh, redecorate the office. Nice. Well, you got to feel good in your office. Exactly. You know, environment is right. so important. Right. It's so true. important. And um, it really helped. It was one of the first steps in actually changing the culture of the company. Oh, that's true. It really true. was. Yeah, because you yeah. built a really nice culture. You'd be surprised yeah, yeah. at how much the environment is important that's true. for that's your true. employees. Yeah, because mm-hmm. no, the, uh, honestly, because I'm an yes. entrepreneur CEO myself, the culture mm-hmm. defines the direction of the company and it the does. people you work with and people you hire. Yeah, I can't yeah. emphasize that enough. Right, right. Our clients had a different feeling when they came into mm-hmm. the office. She was like, oh, oh, wow. You know? <laughs> and so... Um, um, that was really important too. Right, right, right. Yeah. So did you have to self-teach yourself about all the financials and the nitty yes. gritties? <laughs> yes, <laughs> the, I did. The not so happy things about <laughs> you managing know, Sometimes a that learning curve is really painful. <laughs> it is. Oh, trust yes. me. We, I, yes. I've been there too. <laughs> yes. It was very painful. And um, I, I learned a lot in the Vistage meetings. Right, and right. I was taking notes oh, and listening. Oh, you took good notes. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh my God. I didn't realize I didn't know so many things. <laughs> I know, <laughs> like learning to read that balance sheet, oh, financial statements. Oh. For a creative person, it's really a it painful really, thing. Yes, <laughs> yes. I think the people part you're really good at, yes. right? Yes, right. yes, yeah, I am. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I think difficulty with company is just the managing of the people yes. and also the management, like, you know, looking at the numbers. You can't yeah. do everything, and that is right, one thing that right, I definitely right. learned. You have to surround yourself with people who know and are really good at the things that you're not good at. Okay, so do you think it matters, like, someone, whether someone likes the business they're in in order to be Um, able to run that business, or, I mean... Oh, yes, absolutely. Yes, absolutely, you have to love what you are doing. Right, right. And you may not love it at first. I didn't know anything about my business. (laughs) But when I figured out what my business was about, which was celebrating people's, um, you know, uh, achievements, celebrating other people, Mm -hmm. and I thought, wow, what a gift I am giving these people. That's true. And so that it just became a passion. It's right, like, right, this is right. such a fun, wonderful right, right, thing. Right. Yeah. Uh, that, and, do you know, the other thing, too, that we realized is that our little lapel pins are in people's jewelry boxes and drawers that's forever. Yeah, that's true. And you don't throw away your little league pins right, right. ever or right. or any, um, you know, like a spelling bee yes. contest that you win or that's anything true. like that. Those are really important memories. Right. It marks a period in time. It does. Right. Yeah, so, so what really we do important. is so meaningful. Right. And, I agree. Um, and so we, everybody was on board with that. That's and, true. It's a our, different perspective to look at is. promotional products, right? Yes, because yes. I love how you made it into a celebration. Mm-hmm. Rather, it's just selling products, which is, no. yeah, which is, then it's not like, yeah. No, we're not, <laughs> just, we're not selling things. the product. Yeah. We're selling a whole right. the celebration, lifestyle, memory. Right, right, right. Yes. That, I yes. love that. Now, you... Is it difficult to inherit like a legacy because you bought someone else's companies? There's all these, you know, inherited yes. stuff that came along with the company, uh, people, management, procedures. It yeah. was very difficult at first. Mm-hmm. And it was an uphill battle kind of thing because right. I wasn't quite sure what I was doing mm-hmm, yet. Mm-hmm. And uh, the feedback that I was getting was something that I felt was negative. Mm-hmm. And I, uh, in terms of, well, we always do it this way. Right. Oh, I hate well, that. Well, we're going to actually <laughs> switch that up just a little bit. Right. Oh, no, we can't do that. We've always done it the other way. Yeah. That's the only way that works. Right, right, right. Well, no, there's other ways. <laughs> there's always <laughs> other ways. Yeah. <laughs> so, unfortunately, yes, there had to be a change there. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, now you also have a master's in marriage fam- uh, marriage and family child counseling prior yes. to your business life. Yes. So, is it relevant to running the business that you're in now? Oh, absolutely. Because uh, that degree is all about relationships. Ah. It's about um, family relationships, right. friend relationships. Relationships, right, right, business right. relationships, right. Uh, as opposed true. to a degree in psychology right. um, or psychiatry is different. <laughs> this is all about relationships mm-hmm. and how you relate to other people. So absolutely. That's mm-hmm. true. I mean, I think in management of, of the company, the employees mm-hmm. is yes. really the hardest. And mm-hmm. there's so much drama that can happen. <laughs> it, can, it can. Yes, it can. Right. Uh-huh. So I would think, when, yeah, so it's great. So you come armed with a gift, basically. Yes, <laughs> tools. <laughs> <laughs> right, because, you know, you could sell anything. I mean, it could be sure. anything, but yes. yeah, but that people aspect is yes. really important. 
Yeah. Okay. So any of your children entrepreneurs? I think they all are actually. Ah, yeah. They, nice. they all have that uh, spirit. Do they give uh, you them. any advice? <laughs> <laughs> does, it, does it turn? The tables turn? <laughs> no, not really. Uh, you know, unless I, I sometimes I'll ask for it. Right, right. Often I'll ask for technical help, which is difficult <laughs> for us baby boomers. You know, we didn't come yeah, into the world knowing yeah. how to use computers and things. So uh, they help me out with things like that. Yeah, and, yeah. and I'll bounce some ideas off them that's from true. time to time, but, but not don't much yeah. know. Oh, that's nice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> They're all in such different fields right, that, right, than right. I am. Mm-hmm. That's true. Now, were there days that you questioned yourself, like, what did I get myself <laughs> into? <laughs> Nadia, that's so funny. I mean, really, uh, yes, many, many days. Right. And uh, what I did is, and I told myself as I get in the car and go to work, is just show up. Mm. Just show right. up and focus on one thing at a time right. when you get into the office. And before you know it, the day goes through and you've, you've dealt with what you need to uh, deal with. That's but, true. That's yeah, true. I think there's a lot in um, just show up. Right. Oh, that's, yeah, that's a yeah. great mentality. I didn't even really think about that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because it's one simple thing that I can do. Like, right. I, can't, I can't figure out the whole day or the right. whole situation. Right, right, right. And, you know, there's always situations, as you oh, know. Oh, yes, it's so always putting there's out always fire. Something. <laughs> yeah, so, I, I mean, you just have to, okay, like, just show up. Right, that's true. And then true. deal with one thing at a time. That's true. Take a deep breath. Yeah, I agree. And you, it's going to be okay. Yeah, I mm-hmm. totally agree. Um, so how do you handle stress normally then? Um, well, um, not too well sometimes, <laughs> <laughs> but um, here's how I do it. Mostly um, exercise is a great stress reliever. Ah, Meditation yes. is a great stress reliever, mm-hmm. uh, putting things into focus like that. Um, you know, you talk to yourself, you vent sometimes, right. mm-hmm. and that helps. Mm-hmm. And it, as long as you tell the person that you're venting to, you know, right. can I just vent for a second? <laughs> That's like, true. This is nothing personal against right, you or anything, right, but right, I'm right. like, can I just get this out? <laughs> and... Um, So those are kinds of ways Uh, that I deal with it. And the other way to deal with stress, too, is to just um, whatever the issue is that's causing the stress, just face it head on and get get through it. Just do it. That's true. Yeah. So now what would you say to women out there who's dedicated so much time to their families or so much Mm -hmm. time to their work? um, How do you get that balance? To get a balance in that. Um, Well, I think that you need to find a way because otherwise part of you inside is dead. Mm. It's gone. Right, right, Because if you're a creative person and you're denying that Mm -hmm, part mm -hmm. of you, um, you're not all there. You're not enjoying every part of life. Mm -hmm, And mm -hmm. and we're here to enjoy life. That's true. There's a lot of joy in life. So um, I think that it's... It's really important that you do find a way. Right, right. Because mm-hmm. you don't do all the stuff. I mean, no. Yeah. No way. No. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. So you just find what's important, right? You do. And mm-hmm. you find um, what. Personally, what's worked for me right. is being very organized mm-hmm, and having mm-hmm. a routine and mm-hmm. a structure right. to my day. Mm-hmm. And I figure that out the night before. Right. And often the first three important things, sometimes they're things I don't want to do. Right, right. They're the first things I do the next uh, day. So, you know, there's a lot of things that you can develop mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. to get through that. But, yeah, certain parts of the day are for this, certain parts uh, of the day are for that. Right. Another part of the day is for something right, else. Right, right. And that way... It reduces stress. Right. And <laughs> and you true. can cover a lot of territory. That's true. And, That's uh, very, very true. It's often why I wear running shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Even if I have a dress on. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Yeah. And do you feel like you also have to let go of certain things that maybe you go, you oh, know yes. what? That's just not going to happen. Oh, yeah. Do you feel bad about it? Like if no. You, no. No. Yeah. So because it, look at all the things I did accomplish today. That's true. So that was obviously not important. So yeah. either it goes on to another day mm-hmm. or it's not important. Right. So yeah. looking at positive. And yes. thinking about the accomplishments. Yeah. Well, yeah. you think about, and I say to my employees sometimes yeah. too, I say, you know, it's not heart surgery. No one's going to die here. This will <laughs> help him. Okay. That's true. This is the joy, the celebration. <laughs> the, these are the good things. And when they get frustrated because, um, Every once in a while, somebody's not happy and right. a, uh, a customer's not happy. It's like, okay, just calm down, take a deep breath. Mm-hmm. It's a pill pins. You ah, know? Right, yeah. it, it's not heart surgery. So how do you we'll keep positive? This. Is it like... Like, you know, all of a sudden, what if you need to perk me up? Like, you've had a horrible day and you're just so down. I mean, what (laughs) what do you do? (laughs) Do you have a method? (laughs) 
I just, I, no, I just, it's just part of your personality. Yeah. I think you just can't stay down for long. And am I down sometimes? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't last very long. Uh, and, right. Um, you just come out of it because... Nothing's going to happen when you're down. <laughs> that's true. That's definitely not, true. There's nothing good is going to happen. <laughs> right. So that's you know, why, true. why stay there? Right. Right. And you just get yourself back up. And I think being busy really helps. Uh, it's like, yeah, that kind of comes from my background yeah, too. It's like, you well, think, huh? things are not um, going well. So you know, clean up the house or do something else. And that's true. Get, get busy. <laughs> Don't just sit there and and worry about it and feel sorry for yourself. No, you know? I agree. Get, get up and get going. And do that's something. True. Cleaning yeah. does help. Cleaning House. I clean a lot of stuff during yes. March. Yes. <laughs> when everything was closed. Oh, no. Isn't that true? Yes. I, I actually too. like, wow, I didn't yes. know I had this much junk to get rid of. I know. <laughs> um, now, as an entrepreneur, do you feel that there's a glass ceiling for women running companies? Uh, yes, I'm sure there is. Mm-hmm. I, I personally haven't experienced that. Right. But uh, yes, I, I believe all the women who talk about that. Mm-hmm. And I believe that that is true. Right. Um, I don't really, I don't really remember or I'm not t- in tune to any kind of prejudice mm-hmm. against me in business right. or anything mm-hmm. uh, from a man. Right. But interestingly enough, from a woman, mm-hmm. I have and I remember. Mm. And so um, I guess... Be careful, women. Be good to each other. That's true. Um, yes. You know, I have had um, an issue with one particular woman at a convention mm-hmm. in San Diego one time. I was back in 2011 oh. or 2012. And, um, and and that was really too bad. Right, so, right, right, uh, right. that's the only issues that I have. That's Otherwise, true. it goes over my head. I don't I don't yeah, hear it true. or I just move on. That's true. Sometimes yeah. women are the harshest critics. Yes. You know, yeah, like be really each, careful. Yeah, each yeah. other. <laughs> we need to help each other. Right, yeah, right, right. Support right. each other. Uh-huh, definitely. Mm-hmm. Um, now, you're voted the best boss. So what does that mean to you, it's, especially oh, in your gosh. business journey? Yeah, that, that was wonderful. I was so honored uh, because my employees nominated me. Oh, and, uh, they did. Yes, they oh. did. And um, then the promotional products industry yes. mm-hmm. uh, chose me. And I, I was so honored by that. Um, what it meant to me in business mm-hmm. was I had put the right person in uh-huh. the right seat, right. Uh, which meaning... You can't put a creative person mm-hmm. in the seat of a bookkeeper. Uh, I mean, um, they can do the job. You can teach them to be right, a bookkeeper, right, right. but they're not enjoying it. And they're right, not right, having right. fun. Right, right. But um, you can. Um, so putting the right person in the right seat, right. so to speak, mm-hmm. in as a business term. Yeah. Uh, I knew they were happy and they were productive and they were doing their best. And I felt like, okay, good. I got it. I got the right person in the right seat and the company is running really well. Right. No, no, no. Actually, that's very important. And that's something like I think as business owners is really hard to do. Yes. Because, you know, sometimes it means a demotion and it feels like you're doing something bad for the employee. But actually, sometimes you put them in the right seat, they're actually happier. Yes. (laughs) You know, it's not necessarily a demotion in their eyes. It's actually because for some some people they cannot handle the stress of certain things mm-hmm. they're not you know they're not comfortable with so. but I try and put the right person in the seat because they that's where the, they're good at right. and that's what they love to yes, do yes and so that award made me feel like yeah good I got it that's true yeah, that's true I'm, I'm I like really that happy. management style mm-hmm. yeah no that's very important mm-hmm. now do you think your entrepreneur journey is complete now with C Sanders or what other opportunities are on the horizon <laughs> no nothing's ever complete <laughs> No, there's always That's other what things. makes you a great entrepreneur. <laughs> there's no. always something new, right? No. <laughs> well, the generation before us, I'm I'll go back to that and mm-hmm. just say, uh, you know, people look forward to retiring. Mm-hmm. But I, I think with baby boomers, we're setting a new example here. Right, you're right, you're right. going to see baby boomers doing really amazing things in their 70s and 80s and even 90s. Right, we, we just right. move on to other things, not retire. That's it's true. It's sort of a bad word that for me. It sounds like, right? It <laughs> yes, sounds bad I don't like too. it. Yeah, I don't like that word. I, I never yes. even imagine, like, what, yes. would I retire? No, I don't think why? so. I think I'll work until I die. Yeah, why? I mean, right. it's fun. Right, it's, right, it's fun. Right, and right. Um, so if you're doing things that you're passionate about, right. so yes, there's always something on the horizon. That's true. That's true. Always, yes. always. Yeah. Do you want to travel when this COVID I thing been, is over? Yes, we have been traveling quite mm-hmm. a bit. And of course, I missed that this right. year. I know. Uh, travel is wonderful. I know. And, 
<laughs> dope. I love it. I've been to South Africa. I've been mm-hmm. through the Baltic Sea. I've been nice. in so many places around the world and just loved every bit of it. Love meeting the people there. Oh, nice. Yeah. And, and you, uh, one place on the bucket list that you want to go to next? Mallorca. Oh, party. <laughs> I said that really quick. <laughs> Actually, I wanted to go there as a teenager. Yes. Uh, my tennis player, Nadal's from Mallorca. So, oh, okay. right, right, right. All oh, right. Yes. So we're both into tennis, too. Yes. Uh-huh. All right. Thank you, Penny, for joining us uh-huh. today and sharing your amazing stories. I love how you have so much wisdom about life and then how to balance uh-huh. things and work and office and business running. So, Thank you so much. Oh, and it's thank so you. nice to see you in person after oh, yes, so many months. And I don't have a mask on for a minute. No, thank you so much, Nadia. It's just it's such an honor, and I've had a lot of fun. Thanks oh, a lot. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So anyway, for all of you out there, please check out uh, Penny's company, C. Sanders, at csanders.net. And um, thank you for coming again on our podcast. And if you want to check out today's video, go to our website, girlinfluencepower.com or subscribe to Collectin's YouTube channel. Well, there you have it, Penny Ledbetter. Thank you for tuning in live today at Girl Influence Power, brought to you in, uh, in partnership with Collectin and CastBox. Mm-hmm.